Premier Eden Sa 2. It's like a 12 hour journey down there by plane, so maybe one day, maybe if there's a StarCraft tournament down there. Anyway, guys, we got our next matchup on the way Bill versus Patience. Patience is 0 2, not 0 3. Gotta give him credit there. Is it just me or Bill's pentagram, but a lot smaller than it was before? Yeah, it's shrunk a bit. Yeah. Uh, it's good you point that out. I'm not, I, I guess that has to do with just his recent lack of success yep. uh, across individual leagues as well as pro league. Just really not the bill that we knew from 2015. Maybe yeah. after a bunch of the second places that he got and the uh, just the upsets that he had to deal with, maybe he took a little bit of a break. But he's beginning to slowly come back here. You can feel it. But uh, as we see here with the predictions. Everyone here at Spo TV is voting for Bjol, so not really too much confidence in patience for this game. And uh, yeah. even though Bjol isn't doing as well as he did before, he's a favorite heel. Yeah, for sure. I mean, patience just, uh, he did decently well at SSL, but then he got crushed by stats. And ever since then, he just hasn't been the same person ever again. So uh, we'll see if he can pull off the upset here against Bjol. We're going to jump into game number two in just a minute, guys. Tell your friends to get into the stream and watch some good StarCraft, some good Team League over here at Pro League. The highest level in the world that we do have. Thinking about what else I can say here to delay this as we do have a little bit of a delay getting into this map. But it looks like it's all ready now, GTR, as we get into game number two, Bial versus Patience. Down here at the bottom, up in the top right, <laughs> it is Patience in the purple for a freak of freaks. And spawning here at the bottom left is Bjol, the yellow Zerg for CJ Anthus. Yeah, my uh, my computer was spazzing out there a little bit. Not sure what was the problem. Hey guys, thanks for coming down. I don't think they have the earphones in their ear. So. Maybe if I say it loud enough, they can hear me. Thanks! Thanks, guys, <laughs> for coming down to the studio. They may have heard that one, yeah. actually. It's the Korean steak of pause. <laughs> uh, but it's always good to see uh, people come down here to Korea to watch StarCraft or any eSport here. Uh, Korea is the mecca of eSports in the world. So yeah. always good to see people come here and we're always happy to say hi after every broadcast, take some photos, do some autographs maybe, talk about the games. Mm -hmm. Just like followers of, uh, well, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're interested in Mecca, just like, uh, just like that for Korea, you can come on down. And of course, as we mentioned before, it is free to get into any of the studios here. Uh, outside of like the finals that are in the big, you know, gigantic gymnasiums or yeah. the stadiums and stuff I, like if, that. If it's something like, say, uh, League of Legends, maybe you have to pay, but it's a very minimal fee compared to the rest of the world. So it's very reasonable because the demand's so high for uh, those games. But moving on to here, we do see Bjol going for that early hatchery with that spawning pool gas. It feels like deja vu, honestly, with that last game. Uh, with the same build order that he did as what Curious did. Mm -hmm. But we see a deviation here from Patience getting that early double gas and opting to go for the Cybernetic Core after the gateway rather than going for the two gateways. They're gonna be just a little bit more passive here. He finally does get the scout off onto Bjell. He did go top left into bottom right uh, before scouting cross spawns here. So maybe he wanted to change up his build specifically uh, based on what he did scout or where he scouted his opponent was at. Maybe if he saw his opponent was a little bit closer, he would add a second gate or something like that. But And, uh, and luckily for go Patience, for there isn't that uh, the horizontal spawns that we see sometimes on this map. And when we see the horizontal spawns in Zerg versus Protoss, most of the time we do see that Roach Ravager all-in build from the Zergs. And uh, with these cross positions, though, we probably won't see that here from Yule today. Yeah, hopefully we get to see a bit more of a macro game here. Lauralak Crest is a four-player map, not our biggest one, but uh, it's it's no frost, right? But still very big, especially when you do get to cross spawns here. 
And we'll see how these players do want to play it out. It looks like Stargate Tech for Patience here is going to be in order. And Overlord Speed for Biel. This has kind of been the trend nowadays. If you guys are just tuning in after a while, Zergs love to get that Overlord Speed. Make sure they get the scouting information. You can also add in some Baneling drops a little bit later on after you morph your Overlords if you do want to go down that path as well. Yeah, Dark showing in those SSL finals that I mentioned before in the last game. Uh, using those Overlords with speed to scout so you don't have to morph them into Overseers. And also when these fe those Phoenixes do come out, uh, they can easily run away from those Phoenix shots compared to what we had before with the slow Overlords. So uh, always a good upgrade to work with. As we see here, actually, Patience is posturing to go for a quick third expansion behind this uh, one Phoenix. So very risky play, but with these cross positions, not really much Bjorn can do about it. Bill's going to get a bit of a scout in the main. It looks like I'm actually on the wrong observer on my computer. There we go. Uh, is going to finally kill this Overlord, but it does get the scout on the third base. And let's see what the response here is from Bjell. For Bjell, I mean, he's got to feel like the, he is the favorite coming into this one, just based on the results of the two players or what, what their form is at right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like, okay, well, let's sit back and go into a bit of a macro game. You know, maybe I can... Uh, go up to ultras very fast if I want to do that kind of play or just uh, you know sit back and play that macro game for sure I mean as you said Bjol is the heavy favorite in this game So there's no real penalty of going for the macro game because Nine out of ten times if you play the macro game against a inferior opponent you will usually win that game so No surprise here Bjol's not going to do anything too crazy He's just gonna play this out like a uh, normal game, see what happens, see what his opponent is doing, and adapt mm. to what his uh, patience is doing. Notice that we do have the Baneling Nest and the Evo Chamber coming down at the same time. This looks a lot like what Dark likes to do. And notice the positions. I'm not even sure if you guys can see it on the mini map uh, of the two overlords that are out on the map right now. Even with the Phoenixes, there's one all the way up in the top left and one all the way down in the bottom right. He's essentially saying these Phoenixes will never scout me. I'm keeping them as safe as possible to make sure I can, uh, you know, go for at least a scout here. Yeah, and obviously the Baneling Nest is only there for those Baneling drops. As we do see mm -hmm. the Infestation Pit go down for Bjol, and he's also getting that plus one range. So obviously uh, he probably doesn't want to work with uh, the melee tech for now with those Zerglings, with those Banelings. He wants to get to Hive Tech quickly. From there, I'm not too sure what he wants to do. Maybe he wants to get quick Ultralisk. Maybe he wants to get Broodlords. We'll just have to wait and see as uh, these Overlords are actually scouting. But they don't actually have any Banelings in this them. This is so. so weird. He's forcing a gigantic pull and an overcharge. And just, he's got nothing in the Overlords. That's why I was saying, you know, maybe he'd just go for a scout because he had nothing ready to go in these Overlords. I think Patience is beginning to recognize, Ooh. like, hey, there's nothing in this. He forced Overcharge, and now he's going to try to Night Ascend. That's a really good play there from Yo, Faking out Patience there with these fake Overlord drops. And as he said, he forced those pilot Overcharges, which means that there are no... Oh! Swarm Host! Is this a what? Quick? Oh, he's actually getting swarmed. Okay, so is he just styling on patience right now? Oh is this God. happening? Because he knows that there's no energy on the mothership core for those pylon overcharges. So if he gets that Nidus network up with those swarm hosts, then I'm not really sure if patience can defend it. We'll just have to wait and see how this goes. This is insanity. You guys are watching uh, <laughs> something very non standard here. I'll just oh, say that. Man. And, uh, I mean, I was taking a look at the Mothership. It does, a Mothership Core, it does have two overcharges right now. They even have three uh, in just a bit. It's at 125 energy for now. I'm really curious if Joel wants to split this up because he, he's got the Ninus Network here at where Patience would normally take his uh, fourth or fifth base. But looks like here, Joel is just going to... Uh, oh, that's what? really awesome. He's going to borrow those Swarm hosts, get the Locusts out, harass these bases, and just... Try and draw this is so the map. cool. I know. <laughs> Will he actually get this Nexus? If he gets this Nexus, that's going to be amazing. That's the thing about Swarmos. These Locusts do so much damage now. They drop right on top of the Nexus, and they get an immediate surround, and they just they, they crush it. They took out all the shields there. It was a really nice response from Patience right away to get the lifts and even pull the probes to make sure that didn't go down. 
and I'm not sure. Okay, he is gonna follow up here. He's gonna follow up, but if these swarm hosts get lifted by these phoenixes, that's not gonna be good for Bjo because he needs these swarm hosts to do a lot of damage yeah. for him. But it uh, looks like Patience wants to move back here. I think he's just attempt defending this Nexus. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do it here. Double overcharge should be enough. Maybe we'll lose one pylon here. Triple overcharge even. Patience taking this very, very seriously. Uh, more swarm hosts are actually coming out here for Bjo and actually. Yol's putting down a lot of creep tumors here, so he definitely wants to start spreading that creep there from that fifth base. But we do see the army of patients, excuse me, walking over to this Ninus Worm. He wants to take that out before it causes him too much more damage. But another Ninus network here. Oh my god, there's so many Ninus networks here from Yol. He's just running all over the place with these. This is so interesting. He's actually trying to make these swarm hosts work on a very big map, going for this harass. Patience is trying to do some counter harass himself. He's going to have an Archon with two Zealots drop out here. Going to warp in about five more. And he's got another Warp Prism also coming in here. Looks like Bjell isn't immediately responding to this, but is coming back to try to defend. Yeah, as we see here, Bjell's just pumping Zerglings now because Swarm Hosts aren't really the best unit to use against a player like uh, Patience who's harassing with... Oh, whoa, whoa, as I say that, that next is at the 12 o'clock has to get cancelled. And oh, the, this defense on Bjell... Uh, does what he needs to do, so I, I love I love this Ninus play from uh, from Yol because he's using these Ninus networks. Swarm hosts generally associated as really immobile units, but if you use those Ninus networks to your advantage, you can move them all around the map oh and start boy. passing locusts. Try to get out of there with your swarm hosts. I hope no force fields come down. He is on the chase here. Could drop out some Locust now for the defense. He doesn't have much else. That is the thing. I love the fact that Patience is attacking here just because when you go for Swarm Host, it's such a huge commitment. Oh, Look at how many Archons are in this in this mix. But the Infestors are out, but he doesn't have any energy for uh, Pathid, uh, for uh, Fungal Growth, so he has to cast these uh, Infested Terrans, but these Infested Terrans don't do anything. There's so much splash damage on the Archons and, and the, the Locusts. The cooldown from the from the Swarm Host is so, so high. So the Locusts come out and they don't do much for the splash damage with the Archons. And now everything for the Protoss is getting right on top of everything of Bills. Oh, I think Patience has done it. He's hit a nice timing there where he <laughs> Bjol only had those Swarm Hosts and Swarm Hosts aren't simply aren't GG. enough. GG. I okay, mean, well, I... <laughs> it was a cool play from Bjol, but... I don't think he followed it up too well. He didn't really see what Patience was doing in terms of his competition. He didn't really see that there was a counterattack coming in. He, he almost committed too much to yeah. the Swarm Host. He made 12 of them, and he also had the Nidus network out. That's so much gas. You can tell that when the attack hit, he, as you were saying, it was just too late in terms of what he had for defense. He, excuse me, the Investors didn't have enough energy. He, he had some lings, basically no bane lings. Like some of them went off uh, to stop the harass at the third base, but outside of that, he just did not have the necessary defense. And I, I can't help but feel that Bell was like trying a new style and was trying to style on patience here, but it just did not work. Yeah, it seems like the style does work in theory, but when he practically tried to use it against patience, it did look nice at the start, but it didn't really feel like there was a proper. Uh, tree work off per se, I guess. Uh, a flow chart um, was the term I'm looking for for that exact build order. And I think I think it, it is good in theory, but it just needs a bit more work to be done with that uh, build. Yeah, maybe uh, knock out some of those timings, like hammer it down really, really tight there. But Jason's really happy after his win, and he's going to keep Afrika in this for sure. We were talking about our hero and Biel generally are the players for uh, CJ Antis that get the wins, but taking out Bill is taking out one of their ace players, and I feel like uh, the other guys from CJ are going to have to turn it on here to make sure they get the win. For sure. I mean, Bunny and Ragnarok are the next two plays for CJ, as we see here, uh, our next game will be Bomber against Bunny. Uh, very close game, in my opinion. Yeah, the battle of the Bs, the battle of the Ts, too. The two Terrans going up against each other. That will be on Frost. But as always, guys, as is the way of Pro League, we are going to take a quick three-minute break before we do get to game number three. So stay tuned. We'll be right back for Bomber versus Bunny. 